is Crunch at Naughty Dog killing the acclaimed company's reputation in future projects? Let's get into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another episode of The Medicine. Do me a huge favor before we get too deep into this one. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when I'm dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up. Y'all know the deal. Y'all know the reason why I am not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. All right, y'all. So this is brought to us on the heels of a story from Jason Schreier originally. Um, and let me just do this. Let me pull this up here. So Jason Schreier sent out a tweet, um, not too long ago at the time of this recording, talking about a story that they're highlighting now on Kotaku where they're talking about, um, crutch at Naughty Dog. Now he's talked about this. He's riled against this. I've talked about this. I've had, you know, fellow brethren from the broadband bullies, um, appear on scram punks where we talked about it at mass. And I know the community is like kind of split about this. I want to say more in the favor of who cares, you know, about crunch, just get, get us on product. Right. And, um, he highlights this though, because I think even with though, even with the majority, what, what I perceive as the majority of, of the, uh, annotations from the community, I think he's trying to, um, enlighten people a little bit further. You know what I'm saying? And I get it. Jason Schreier is a divisive figure. But he's not, he's not the tell-all be-all for this cause, right? So what I want to do is I want to talk about the story. I want to talk about a developer from Naughty Dog or a former developer that's actually shedding light on this. And I want to once again try to help clear the air for those that may not be familiar like I with what's being talked about here. Because I do have some type of familiarity with this type of this type of crunch. And, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But first and foremost, let's highlight the story from Kotaku. So in a tweet. Jason Schreier says, it's no surprise that The Last of Us 2 led to months of crunch at Naughty Dog, but with 70% of the designers who worked on Uncharted 4 now gone, many are asking, how much longer can this culture last? And is the sacrifice really worth it? He says, my latest. And I'm not gonna go over the article right now because it's a full in depth article. I urge everybody to read it. Now, once again, as he's prone to do, his this response towards crunch, was received by a lot of ire from the community. People were saying, oh, he's at it again. Who cares? People got a crunch. Everybody got to work a few extra hours and all this other stuff, right? And on the heels of that, though, a Naughty Dog, dog developer has burst out of the seams and has led credence to what Jason Schreier is saying. He set off a series of tweets where first off, and the guy's name is Jonathan Cooper. He goes by at Game Anim. Game Anim, um, on Twitter. He says, when I left Naughty Dog late last year, they threatened to withhold my final paycheck until I signed additional paperwork stating I wouldn't share their production practices. They finally relented when I assured them that was most likely illegal. I mean, there was a series of stuff here. But the biggest eye-popping thing that I noticed was this particular tweet. He said, the reason why I left Naughty Dog, that is, is because I only want to work with the best. That is no longer Naughty Dog. Their reputation for crunch within LA is so bad, it was near impossible to hire seasoned contract game animators to close out the project. As such, we loaded up on film animator. And he goes on and on and on. Um, I, I, wanna, I think the final tweet is, um, it says, um, there are Naughty Dog stories worse than this. Um, in, in some of the prior projects that he talked about. But like everything on my Twitter, I'm focusing on animation. For The Last of Us 2 fans, the game should turn out great with industry leading animation. I would just not recommend anyone work at Naughty Dog until they prioritize talent retention. So they're saying that they, they burn people out, make them leave. Um, he talks about here too, about how somebody that worked here had to be rushed to the host hospital after some, you know, having to suffer from crunch. Here's the thing, y'all. Um, a lot of people may be listening to this and they're saying, MM2K, it just is par for the course, right? Um, people know what they're getting into when they go into this these these companies. Um, and I wanna say not necessarily. Nobody, nobody says, hey, I'm gonna be an independent contractor most likely. 
you're going to, you know, put the proverbial gun to my head. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hold my 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 job shit, my job space here. If I want to take just a little bit of time off, force me to crunch, not for weeks, not for a month, but in some cases, a year over a year. You know what I'm saying? For two years, in in some reported cases, right? Um, not only is that just uh, you know, is that mind numbing no matter what you do, but that's what this particular work that these guys and gals do it's really mind numbing for this fact, you know um, it is very unfortunate, but what people don't understand is that when you're doing programming, and I have experience in this, when you're crushing for programming and you're doing something that is intensive on the mind the neurological effects are severe now, I had put myself through some crunch because I ran into a situation where I had programmers that, you know, during my tenure, I had programmers working on a very important application and they just couldn't get it done. And then everybody was turning and looking at me and said, hey, you convinced us that this is something that we need. We invested a lot of time and resources into this. So therefore, you got to make this happen. And they let the people go. So... I, I was like, look, I can't trust nobody better than I can trust myself. So I started working 14 hour days every day, six, seven days a week. This went on for four, five, six months. Okay. I was burnt out. I was a literal, literal vegetable. Okay. But this is something that was self, self imposed. I decided to handle that problem with that. So it, even with that, it's something that was self-imposed, not something that I was walked into, you know, working a regular work schedule. Then all of a sudden somebody said to me, hey, MM2K, we got a crunch now. It's going to be a couple months. And then you go in and be like, okay, it's over yet. No, a couple more months. And then you, and next thing you know, it's two or three years. I'm the one that set the pace. So at least I had that comfortability. A lot of these developers are not running into those situations. Okay. They're being thrust into this and it's not cool and it has like i said neurological effects that if you don't do programming you have no idea and it was even more strenuous for me because i was the it manager you know what i mean and i really wasn't the biggest it worker a lot i had to teach myself how to program then do the stuff pretty much all on my own all right so that's just my little story there so again for those that want to be dismissive of this that's just my message to you. Don't armchair quarterback. I, I hate when smart people do that because it makes you sound dumb. Do some research. No, it's not good. It may not change your total opinion, but at least know what you're talking about and educate the people that you're talking to on the other side of the mic. Okay. Don't, don't sound stupid. All right. So with that being said, again, being dismissive doesn't help because this definitely is a problem, but here's the paradox. We as gamers are focused so much on polygons and compute units and we want everything right now. We want it flawless. There's no other way to get that out to the gamer besides crunch. That's the paradox that we're in. Th this is a business and in a business you're here to make money. And yes, they can hire 8,000 people to do it so there's no crunch, but they're not making money. That's not happening. That's not realistic. Nobody gets fed under those, uh, under those circumstances. You understand what I'm saying? See, here's the problem. The problem does lie with us. And again, people aren't going to like this and they're going to throw rotten tomatoes at me the best way that they can and say, boo, MM2K. But here's the har harsh reality. Here's the jagged pill for everyone to swallow. It, it starts with us. We want that AAA product. We want it only for $60, even though with the cost of inflation and all the other polygons and compute units and larger worlds that we have in these games right now, that the, the what we're being charged, you know, across the board, it's not rising with inflation, right? So again, you want more for the same buck and you want it faster. That in turn is gonna lead to companies because they're like, we're gonna make money out of this. That in turn is gonna lead them and two, trying to do more with less, with less people and making them crunch, right? So how can we as a community try to fight towards this? Because it isn't sustainable, this current model. This is gonna be unpopular, but it is, it is the truth. We're either gonna to have to accept the price hike 
to $70 or something like that, or we're going to have to lay back from the jaws of, of, of life that we try to apply every time microtransactions are brought up. Microtransactions and loot boxes. Now hear me out. I'm not saying that any microtransaction or any loot box in a heavily monetized game is okay. Games like Battlefront 2, they were atrocious, they were horrendous. The community spoke up and they responded in due course. That's what should have happened. You know what I'm saying? But I'm I'm beckon back to Mass Effect 3, where you know the multiplayer had some some sprinkles of, of uh um um loot boxes spread within it it wasn't too overbearing right if people want to interact and do that then that's fine as long as there's those of us that don't want to do that and then there's people that do want to do it let them do that let those people subsidize the gap in financial need that these people are running into so maybe they can hire some more workers they can invest in better tools tools that don't necessarily just um allow you to add more polygons and compute units but you still need more people to need in order to get it done they need more efficient tools and they need the money and resources in order to do this and the answer is not ea is not just going to say we're going to constantly be in the red and make games because that's what make people happy no but you would hey look if you opened a business you would not say you know what i ain't got to feed my family let's just be in the red all the time let me just pay, 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 lose my house, lose, uh, you know, can't pay my utilities, all that stuff. You wouldn't say that. Nobody would say that in a capitalistic society or any business whatsoever. It's silly. So these businesses have to make money. So if we want this trend to stop going down, because I'm going to tell you, it's going to get bad. If we don't get proactive about this and ease up a little bit on some of the silly stuff that we fight 24-7, it's going to get worse. What we need to do again is understand that games are going to have to cost more because we want more. You know what I'm saying? It's either going to be a consistent price hike for everybody or we're going to have to not be so pitchfork and, and flamethrowing when it comes to microtransactions and loot boxes. Not all microtransactions and loot boxes are horrendous, okay? If somebody wants to pay them and I ain't got to pay it in order to enjoy the game, then great, let them pay them. You know what I'm saying? But on the flip side of that, you know what I'm saying? We got to recognize that this is an issue. You know what I mean? And if we do all that in totality, we can still get the big, massive, great games that we want. And that's it from your boy, MM2K. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below, because like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead to the Broadband Bullies, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, and of course, the Stadium Dosage. With that being said, you all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.